Welcome to our seminar on spiritual warfare. In the last couple sessions, we've been talking about the aspect of curses, their origin, how to recognize them, and how they are evidenced or manifested in a person's life. And today I want to talk about how to be free from the curse. Because a curse is not just a malady of life that we have to kind of uh, go through and just kind of uh, realize God will give us grace for it and things like that. No, when, it, when it's dealing with curses, we can, have, we can break them. Because these are words that are intended for our destruction. It's intended to make our life uh, less than what God has intended it to be. So we need to recognize them and we need to take authority over them and cancel them in the name of Jesus. You see, uh, uh, as a, back to our illustration of the courtroom, these are like accusations, they are consequences, they are the legitimate consequences for, uh, you know, of our disobedience. But yet we need to apply the, um, the power of attorney given to us in the name of Jesus. We need to apply the blood of Jesus over this to be able to be set free. And uh, they, they take on, uh, they can be generationally passed down or they can be a consequence of our own sin or, or just uh, the result of evil intentions uh, of others close to us that have tried to form and manipulate our life. That's why curses are in the general category of witchcraft. And, um, and yet we have uh, authority over that. We can cancel them. So I want to talk about that. The first one I want to talk about is we have to create to establish a clear biblical scriptural basis for the right to be released from a curse. When you're dealing in the area of spiritual warfare, you need to trust totally on what God has said. That's why Jesus, when he was tempted, he did not just reason with the enemy. He spoke out the word of God. He says, Satan, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. And, and, and each one, each time, and afterwards it says, <laughs> the enemy got so frustrated, he just left. <laughs> he, he left him. And then the, the Lord sent angels to, to strengthen him and to uh, build him up. Because we need to fight this good warfare, this warfare that is against our faith, that is trying to create and to, to destroy our personal lives. So we have to establish that, uh, that uh, uh, basis scripturally. I'll give you a few, and I want you just to write these down, keep them, them with you, maybe even memorize them, just because it is so important when we recognize the activity of the enemy and curses that have been placed against us, then we need to respond. In Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, is so important, where it says that, Christ became a curse for us, okay? Because uh, as is written, you know, curses everyone who, who is hung on a tree, you know, who is nailed to a tree, you know. And so um, that curse, he took upon himself the curse so that we might receive the blessings of Abraham. So there was a divine exchange. You don't have to bear the curse. Jesus bore it for you. You just receive the blessings of Abraham, okay? So you have to remind the enemy that the curse was already canceled in Christ Jesus. In Ephesians 1, verse uh, 7, it talks about the... Um, uh, says that we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, okay? So the sin... Uh, that Satan tries to accuse us of, we have been forgiven because the blood of Jesus has been shed, okay? Uh, so he, and then he lavished upon us his grace, right? He poured it upon us. So uh, the, we have to remind the enemy, no, we've been forgiven. We have been forgiven. And then in Colossians 1, 12 and 13, how we have been taken out of the domain of darkness and we've been transformed, transferred into the kingdom of his beloved son. Okay, So we have this transference. We are no longer legally under the domain of darkness. These 
curses no longer have a reason to alight or to maintain themselves. And then in 1 John uh, 3, 8, it says that Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. He came and he did that, okay? So we need to say, no, you have been destroyed. We now have power over you. We can now renounce that curse and break it over our lives. Luke 10, 19, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall from heaven. <laughs> you know, so he's a fallen angel. He has no lofty position. He has no legitimate right against us because he has fallen from his place and he is under our feet. So these are just some of the different scriptural uh, basis for our own redemption. When I uh, go into the, uh, the scriptures and I see certain things, especially the curses and, and God's remedy for them, I, I like to look at it almost like types of my own personal struggle. Uh, for example, let's go to the curses placed on Egypt for, uh, to be able to set, the, set free Israel from slavery. I think each, each one of those 10 speak to me about uh, aspects of my life that I can get set free from. First of all, there was the blood, the blood over the river Nile. This is in Exodus chapter seven. We can just kind of follow it through in the next few chapters of Exodus. I won't go through reading each one, but I want to just, you know, and then it, then it speaks about in, in Hebrews where, you know, that uh, through the, through the shed blood, we have the forgiveness of sin. So that blood has an antidote, okay? It was a curse on the river. Things died. <laughs> All the fish died, turned to blood. You couldn't drink it, you know? But then through the blood of Jesus, we have forgiveness. Okay? So there's always that antidote that, uh, uh, to that. Then you have the frogs. The frogs uh, are noted for their their fork and tongue for the for the long tongue, the evil speaking, the the, the murmuring, the slandering, the, the things that come out, the cursing, and yet God has given us the ability to bless. We can take our tongue that is inflamed by hell and we can sanctify it as an instrument of righteousness to bless others. Those that curse, we have an antidote, we bless. <laughs> You know, people curse us, we bless them. Then there's a lice, and lice gets in the hair. It just multiplies quickly. And it, to me, it talks about a, of a person whose mind is just so confused and just continually thinking bad thoughts. Well, we have the mind of Christ. That's the antidote. We can have our mind transformed by his word. Then the livestock, the cattle were, were diseased and they died. And the cattle at that time talked about sustenance, talked about our livelihood, talked about our, our money, because that's what people were known for. They, weren't, they didn't have so much the, the gold and silver, but they had cattle. And uh, so they talked about prosperity, and God has caused us to be, that all of our needs would be met according to his riches. We have an abundance in Christ. Then the boils came on. Uh, it was the next one, the sixth one, and, and the Lord said, by his stripes we were healed. And so we have healing through the blood of Jesus. Hail came down, and hail is like condemnation. It's like, uh, it just, uh, it's, it's like being stoned, but you know, stones from these ice stones from heaven, just coming down, and yet God has given us a shield of favor around us. Then the locust, the locust to me speaks of, of just uh, devastation. And yet we have a new life in Christ Jesus. Then darkness came. And that's like the, you know, the, the very darkness of the evil around us. And yet God has given us authority over the darkness. We can, we can speak to the darkness. And we can uh, uh, disperse the darkness through the name of Jesus. And the last one was that death angel. And yet because of the blood of Jesus, we have salvation. It doesn't... Uh, uh, it passes over us <laughs> and we have eternal life. So, so when I, I look at these curses, I look for antidotes. I look for what the curse in these different evidences, these different ways that they're manifest, how we can counteract them by applying the blood of Jesus, 
by applying what Christ has done. So the first thing is get that scriptural uh, uh, basis for being saved. The next one is to commit yourself to obedience because the blessings, it's all conditional. Um, cursing and blessing is something we have to choose. And the choice is so important because it's a guarantee of your freedom. So commit yourself to obedience. Don't just, uh, don't just live whatever you feel like doing at the moment and, and justify yourself saying, well, God's grace covers me. No. Uh, if you want to live in the blessings of God, then you're going to need to hear and obey his word. Commit yourself to obedience. The next one is to confess your faith in Jesus Christ. Confession, as we've talked about before, is a weapon against the enemy. We come against him through our confession, through the testimony of what the blood of Jesus has done, okay? Uh, and so we confess our, our faith in Jesus Christ. The fourth thing is to confess any known sin. It is through sin that, that uh, we become slaves. We, it is through sin that the, even these curses find their place and actually can actually work their work. So we need to confess sin. If we confess our sins, as in 1 John 1, 9, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So confess your sin, any known sin. God will bring it about. Don't just try to invent something to confess. No, if you've sinned, you know it. <laughs> then you have to deal with it. You have to bring it to the light and allow the forgiveness of God to wash it away. Then you need to forgive other people, their offenses especially those that have hurt you or hurt people you, you love. Because those are, are ways that the enemy uses to try to find a foothold, an argument against you. So many times I've seen people transform the moment they forgive other people. I've seen people that have hardened their heart and not forgiven. And uh, judgment. Uh, one situation happened years ago. It was one of the first few years we've been, we were here in Portugal. One of our uh, home groups, one of our small groups, was, uh, was teaching and they were teaching about um, God's blessing, how God wants to respond to bless you and heal you. Well, a neighbor came in and she, she said, I, I have a problem with my knee. Would you pray for my knee? He said, sure. And, and while he was praying, God gave him a picture of like a rose and he says um, uh, ma'am I have uh, I get this picture that God wants to give you this healing but you need to forgive you're holding bitterness in your heart you need to forgive and her face changed and she said I'll never forget you don't know me you don't know what what has happened to me I will never forgive and he, he just pleaded with her he says no God uh, wants to bless you he wants to heal you but you need to forgive. And she said, I don't care what God says. I don't care what the Bible says. I don't care what this church says. I'm not going to forgive. And that person at that moment, she fell down dead. It shocked the whole church. There was a fear of God that came into us. But we realized that if you don't forgive, the curse can alight. The curse can have its effect. And that moment, the enemy took her life. God gave her a way out. God gave her a, 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 an antidote. God gave her a solution. But she rejected it because she wouldn't forgive. You need to forgive everyone to be set free. The sixth area is you need to renounce all forms of contact with the occult, whether it be witchcraft, whether it be sorcery, divination, whatever it is. We'll get into some of those other areas uh, in, in, in the next sessions. But I want us to take seriously our life. Even if we were a child and brought there by an aunt or a mother or, or some friend, or we did it for curiosity, those that involve themselves in the occult are placing themselves in a place of torment, to be tormented. You need to renounce that. Renouncing is cutting the ties and saying, no, I'm not going to do that ever again. It's breaking the very stronghold. Okay, you renounce it in the name of Jesus, all forms of the occult. And then the last one is release yourself in the name of Jesus. Just say, I release myself from this curse. I am no longer under the curse. 
for, for I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Release yourself, you know, from that curse. If you practice those seven things, the enemy has no more arguments. He has no way to bring about confusion, destruction, break your, uh, break your life up, you know, in, in disasters after disasters. All those evidences can be turned around as you apply the precious blood of Jesus, what Jesus has done for you, and get set free. Lord bless you.